An aircraft carrier is enough to change the military power of a country. These ships are one of the most powerful personal assets the military can have. According to international law, aircraft carriers can be legally placed 14 miles or 22 kilometers off the coast of any country. Obviously, the strategic impact of being able to establish a military airbase just a few miles from any coast in the world is huge. In today's program, we will see how these massive war machines work. As of 2021, only 22 aircraft carriers in the world are in service, capable of launching fixed-wing aircraft. France, India, Russia, Spain, and Thailand each have one. China, Italy, and the United Kingdom each have two carriers in their fleet. The United States operates the remaining 11 carriers, they are so large and possess such massive firepower that they are nicknamed as supercarriers. At any given moment, these American carriers can hold 64 planes. However, they can readily accommodate more than 90 aircraft in a warlike situation. One U.S. supercarrier has a larger air force than 70% of all countries in the world. While the use of these warships provides militaries with a significant strategic advantage, they also pose one of the most difficult operational obstacles. The offensive weapon of a carrier is the aircraft on board. They do have a limited number of defensive weapons, such as SeaWiz, a short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapon. Secondly, ram missile system, which can launch short-range surface-to-air missiles and lastly, several machine guns. These carriers, like any other formidable military asset, are a major target. So they never go alone while on deployment. A guided missile cruiser, two guided missile destroyers, an attack submarine, and a supply ship are usually part of an American carrier strike group. However, depending on the objective this mix may alter. Each of the group ships has a mix of offensive and defensive roles except the supply ship. Majority of aircraft carriers do not require regular refueling. All 11 American carriers, as well as the French carrier, are nuclear-powered, allowing them to sail for up to 25 years without refueling. Even a conventional-powered aircraft carrier like India's INS Vikramaditya have a range of 15,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers between refueling. What they cannot do is bring enough food, which is always necessary and the jet fuel needed for combat operations. The role of the supply ship is critical in this situation. It will sail off to a nearby port to take on fuel, ammunition, food, mail and return back to the strike group. From there, the two ships will shoot lines to each other. These lines are used to pull hoses over to the carrier, which are used to transfer aviation fuel. For solid supplies there are two methods, the first is to transfer it like a zip line. For the second method, helicopter will be used to transfer the goods from one ship to another. C-2 Greyhounds are being used as cargo aircraft by Americans, providing a high-frequency, often daily connectivity between carriers and shore. These planes are crucial for delivering spare parts as well as transporting VIPs. By the way, in this channel we are on a mission to reach 1,000 subscriber by end of this year. So if you are enjoying this video, a sub will be massive. Over 6,000 people are needed to manage these huge battleships, which are normally full-fledged cities at sea. On the American carrier the color of the shirt worn by each personnel immediately identifies their work. Yellow shirts are in charge of navigating planes around the deck. Blue shirts are assistants to yellow shirts. All ammunition handling and mounting are done by red shirts. The purple shirts oversee aircraft fueling. Green shirts are worn by a variety of people, including cable crews and maintenance workers. White shirts are also worn by a mix of people, including those helping aircraft landing, working as medical personnel and more. Finally, plane captains wear brown shirts and are responsible for monitoring all tasks related to getting an aircraft ready for flight. Catapults are used by all US and French carriers to accelerate aircraft to take off speed from their short runways. In less than 2 seconds, it can accelerate a plane from 0 to 186 miles per hour. To land on a carrier. A pilot needs to snag one of four arresting wires with his plane's tailhook. Pilots have to accelerate their aircraft at full throttle the moment they touch down so that they can take off in case they miss the wires. A U.S. carrier air wing consists of two to three squadrons of F Super Hornets for air superiority and ground attack, one squadron of F-18 Hornets for air defense, one squadron of EA-18G Growlers for electronic warfare, one squadron of E-2C Hawkeye for long-range early warning and one squadron of SH-60 Seahawk helicopters for anti-submarine warfare. The hangar is located beneath the flight deck. A big carrier can hold up to 100 planes. When not in use, enormous elevators transport airplanes from the flight deck to the hangar for storage. 
Stores, gyms, barber shops, lounges, and other modest comforts are available on these ships. Most crew members on board are assigned a single bunk in a room with up to 100 other people. On the other hand high-ranking officials have more spacious quarters. The USS Gerald R. Ford, being the world's largest aircraft carrier in the world's most powerful navy, is massive. It took eight years to build and several more years to test. It's over 1,000 feet long and nearly 250 feet tall, with a displacement of 100,000 tons. Operating costs are estimated to be around $7 million per day. A Ford-class carrier's tag price is $18 billion, making it the costliest warship ever built. Under dire circumstances it can accommodate around 100 planes and has more than 40 separate fueling stations to reduce the turnaround time of aircrafts. This ship is nuclear-powered, which means it has an indefinite range and is designed to endure 50 years of service life. She was developed using cutting-edge technologies, and many of her working elements are automated, allowing her to operate with 25% fewer crew compared to Nimitz class of carriers. The broader control center is of course the bridge from where its twin nuclear engines can propel this massive ship to speeds of over 30 knots. While the basic navigations are often managed digitally, there is a conventional steering wheel available as a backup. Unfortunately, the ship is yet to be fully operational due to a slew of technical issues. A report in early 2021 stated that the ship was facing a launch failure of its aircraft every 181 attempt. It's not yet clear how these issues are going to be fixed. Latest indications are the ship might be deployed sometime in 2022. So, would you hope on board these floating behemoth or being confined to an area even this large in the midst of the ocean would be too much for you? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. And as always, keep wondering.